Well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this conference. I'm very impressed at the similarities between this approach here and the general political economy approach concerning the varieties of capitalism and comparative capitalism, which is much more my, my play field, so to say. Well, uh, basically, it, it's not so... Uh, it, it's th this paper here is much more uh, some notes on the debate. It's much more food for thought than exactly... Uh, what you'd say in terms of a, a, an empirical research, it's to be a, 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 a just to, to start a, a future empirical research. Uh, well, uh, as it was previously defined, but I'd like to mention one aspect of uh, financialization, which uh, it's in the case of Brazil, but perhaps it's also in the case of other uh, um, emerging countries and BRICS, which is the positive narrative associated to, to financialization. We could say that in Brazil, this is seen as modernization in the sense that you have more credit, you have more uh, risk management tools, and you have more sources to tap money. So when, once you get f uh, funding from trading companies, for example, once you get, you can have more uh, hedge uh, derivatives and things like that, you the agriculture is, is, is better. You can cope better with uh, uh, the intrinsic risks of agricultural production. Uh, the second aspect is, th which has already been mentioned, the introduction of uh, financial instruments. And um, in the case of Brazil, of course, it's the entry of new players in terms of Brazilian agriculture. And this traces back to the beginning of the 90s. We can see clearly the, uh, uh, we'd say that from the year 2000 on, which is very associated to the more uh, volatility and the more assetization of, uh, of land and agricultural production, you have the institutional investors, transnational companies, and other actors associated to land grabbing in, in general. And I would say that also the growing importance of stock markets in the Brazilian agribusiness, I don't know about South Africa, but we, we have uh, our giant Brazilian multinationals in the protein industry, such as JBS and also uh, uh, Brazil Foods, BR Foods. They are uh, the stock markets uh, and the shareholder role has, uh, has been uh, on, on the rise. Uh, well, as in order to understand financialization, I'll go through quickly these points because they were already very well defined by the previous presentation. I would say that uh, one aspect, one very important aspect is the political aspect in the sense that the rise to, to power of the financial market actors, uh, it's uh, in the, not only in the corporate world, but also in the political world. So you have corporations and governments more managed and influenced by, by the financial markets. And I think that uh, as a self-standard uh, research agenda, this could be further developed in, in, in with, a more f with a greater focus on agriculture. And then you have the expansion of securitization from assets in, in the real economy to, cr to create financial products. That's one important thing if you trace back to Karl Marx's uh, political economy, is that uh, money is not only the general equivalent of commodities, but money is a commodity itself. So we have a diversity of uh, commodities uh, made out of money. Then you've got uh, the rise of uh, institutional investors and, uh, of course, a, a displacement. That's also very important. The displacement from financial system based on banks to a financial system based on, on capital markets and institutional investors. This was mentioned previously by Ruth Hall in the case of uh, state-funded agriculture, modern agriculture, and how this is uh, more and more related to financial markets and uh, so, and not only banks, but uh, uh, capital markets and these investment funds. Well, just to give a general idea of uh, the amount of money involved in terms of uh, um, hedge funds, uh, and institutional investors in general, you, you've got, it's highly concentrated uh, in the US, as you can see, $26.3 trillion, the Bank of New York Mellon and JP Morgan Chase is the second largest one, 
but you also have France and to a lesser extent uh, uh, Japan and, and the UK. What's important to mention here is also uh, that together with the, the amount of money and the flow of money, there is also, uh, um, so to say, uh, a variety of capitalism which is being uh, uh, propagated. And this variety of capitalism is precisely the liberal market economy and all the liberalizing pressures. Uh, here you can see this is a, in order to visualize the scale of portfolio investment, and you see that the US is, is, is completely dominating. Uh, um, it's true that China has been on the rise with invest in, in, in institutional investors and investment funds in terms of land acquisition and commodities in general, but of course it's, it plays a, a minor role, and you see that US and the UK are the most important ones. The, also related to the financialization, and I think it's another aspect of our, our political economy when you talk about the supply chain in general, when you talk about the labor associated to agri-food corporations, is the shareholder value maximizing ideology in the sense that um, it's true that in the case of BRICS you have the so-called block holder uh, uh, governance, uh, uh, governance structure and uh, corporate ownership. But um, more and more you have the presence of uh, uh, institutional investors as a major, uh, with a growing share in terms of uh, uh, ownership in these agri-food corporations. And of course this, is, this has an implication in terms of capital and labor relations because there is, a, there is much more pressure to reduce wages in order to uh, increase the crop yield, the, in, to increase the yields uh, from the shares. Uh, the shareholder uh, maximizing value ideology, so it, it, increases all, it also increases a greater role for stock market as an, an, an American uh, sociologist has once said, an economic sociologist, there is a, the companies become more and more managed by the market, by, by the market rationale. Uh, and an indication also, uh, as a general indication of financialization, as Krippner, Greta Krippner has capitalized on, on, on market, uh, she mentions uh, the extent to which non-financial firms obtain income from financial investments. This is also very important. In the case of Brazil, in 2008, Sagia, today it's merged with Perdigão and you have the Brazil Foods. Sagia lost 4 billion reais with uh, exchange derivatives because there was a high leverage in exchange derivatives and it, and it was not used as, this financial instrument was not used as protection. It was used uh, uh, to make money. So it's, uh, it's non-financial firms making money out of uh, uh, financial activities. Well, w one thing important in terms of uh, financialization in the agribusiness is to go beyond this linear relationship between financial assets and commodity prices. That's true, this is an important element in terms of, a, of an econometric study of a, a correlation of the econometric causality. But I suppose that a, a political economy approach is also interested in terms of, uh, of the actors involved in the process of financialization. And uh, also, uh, what changes does it uh, entail in terms of uh, trading companies, pension funds, and especially the, the supply chains. What, is, what, what, are the, what are the impacts for the value chains in, in, in general? Uh, well, uh, I just uh, remind that you, you've got this uh, uh, large corporations as an example of non-financial firms involved with uh, financial instruments. So you've got this large corporations in the agricultural derivatives market. Uh, these ADN, Bungie, Cargill, and Louis Dreyfus, and an increasing shift from investment funds in commodities and land to South America, especially Brazil and Africa. This is an important point why financialization should be at the heart of our agenda, according to, uh, well, I think so at least. Uh, 
I'll just present briefly some, some, some figures concerning which could serve as a as type of a proxy to, ana to analyze uh, financialization. One is the soya uh, price evolution between, you see that between 1990 and 2000. Of course, at the end of the 90s, this is a monthly uh, figure. At the end of the, uh, of the 90s, you have a decrease in the prices of commodities in general. So it was uh, with oil also and uh, mining uh, commodities. Uh, and when it comes to 2001 and to 2013, between these two years, and you have a much more you have much more volatility. You've got a general increase in terms of the commodity the soya price evolution, and you have much more volatility. That's one important aspect because uh, it means, statistically speaking, you'd say that the coefficient of variation is much higher. Uh, over the last uh, uh, 10 years, uh, 12 years, than it was before. And it's not only due to demand, which is related to the increase, but it's also due to the more financial investment in terms of uh, in, in these commodities. Uh, we've got also the, pro the food price index is, is on the rise, uh, as calculated by fall statistics. Uh, and in terms of uh, now just mentioning some estalized factors, as I said, we, we, we need to carry out a, a deeper research, a, a, an empirical research in the case of Brazil. But just to mention some, some general aspects, uh, you see that there is a, the rise of futures contractors with physical delivery in Brazil. Um, it is 71% in 2011. And uh, this, the same kind of futures contract without physical delivery, it was just 20% in the year 2000. So this idea of decoupling production and uh, trading of the commodity in terms of a futures contract. And of course, it got more influence uh, uh, from capital markets. Uh, in terms of the share from different industries in, in open industries, publicly tra traded companies in the Brazilian stock market and the futures market, uh, the share of agribusiness companies is 21.2%. So you have um, the agribusiness related companies are much more present and as a self-standing sector, it's the most important one in, in the Brazilian uh, capital market. And also, when you see that, uh, of course, the capital markets in Brazil is, is much lower than in India and in China, but it's on, on the rise. And it, when you see the evolution from foreign capital share in the Brazilian capital market, you, there is also an increase between... <laughs>